stream away, stream away, stream away. Let me go, let me stream, let me watch in. And... Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was a very bad rendition of Orinoco Flow with some of the words changed so it sounded more like a stream flow, but not a great deal like a stream flow. Okay, so today we're going to continue with what we were doing previously, uh, and that is uh, this program here that attempts to find where the Terminator, uh, the uh, line that separates sunrise from sunset, not Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, uh, is on a given planet. And last time we tried this and much bad things happened, as, as we like to say. Um, uh, we had a lot of problems and things didn't work and we got bad results and I was sad. Uh, so that's pretty bad. Um, there's a couple of things we need to do eventually that we might do first, it doesn't really matter. One is we want to get these uh, the numbers that we have here from the uh, from the arguments given to the program. We don't want to be hard coding them. Um, for right now, that's not a huge deal because it's not working. And so until it works, I, I, it's okay not to necessarily be hard coding. Um, so it is okay to be hard coding until we get this working, and then we can not hard code, and then we can uh, then we can use it directly from the command line. Uh, so let's try to figure out what's going wrong here. Um, I'm going to just choose, roughly speaking, the date of the equinox this year, which I guess was the 20th of March 2020. Um, and again, I know we tried this something like this yesterday, but, um, but bear with me. I think I just want to see that if you know, we'll just try this as sort of a fresh start here. Let's make sure I do have all the parameters correct. Uh, planet 399. Time is. Uh, you know, um, midnight on the equinox, roughly. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a sneeze, not a cough. So you have malaria, not uh, not COVID-19. Um, I think, I'm almost sure this is the correct, uh, this might be the only thing that, that is suspicious here, is the reference frame I'm using. I'm pretty sure IAU Earth is the frame that rotates with the Earth uh, where the zero, where the x-axis touches the equator, where it meets the prime meridian. Um, unfortunately, that might be the literally the only thing I'm not 100% sure. Well, it's, I shouldn't say that. That's the thing I'm least certain of. Um, so let's take a look at here. And, uh-oh. We already have some issues here. That was a PDF, which we don't want. Um... Yeah, I think this is frames.re. There we go. This is the HTML version. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So this is already telling us that IAU Earth should do what I want, but there's better things to use here. Um, fixed to the Earth's crust. Um... Mm -hmm. Earth fix is not the frame we want, so let's try. I mean, the problem is the, the the degree of error I'm getting is much too large to be explained by the difference between IAU Earth and ITRF 93. But hey, we'll use it. Which, but this also means that we're going to have a problem when we generalize this because I don't think ITRF 93 is the frame that's given when you use Earth normally. I think it's usually IAU Earth. So we're going to have some issues here, but um, get it working first, then get it correct, is the motto of almost no one. Okay, so let's take a look at the term. Okay, so it did run. Let's see what this does. Um, these numbers are the latitudes, these numbers are the longitudes. So according, this is actually a pretty flat looking frame here. Um, I mean, this is the kind of thing I would expect to see. Uh, the Terminator is at 91 degrees east. The other Terminator will be at minus 90. Roughly, that is looking pretty good, actually. Um, and so this is basically saying that, yeah, the line's pretty, this is a pretty solid line here. So now, let's plot this line, although I have suspicions. Um, Okay, I'm 
to be a little bit careful here. I really should have piped the output of that program or something, but now this will be this. This, and now we can GNU plot. That actually looks pretty decent. This is exactly what I would expect. Now the weird thing here is, by the way, because it's midnight, uh, this is the middle of the dark part of the Terminator. The the light part is between, where, basically where you can't see it. Between here, and then it loops around to here, but we, we can't see it because it's, uh, because it's not, um, because it, this only this, there are no points beyond like minus 90 and plus 90. Now it's a little bit worrisome that this goes up all the way to plus, well, maybe it's not that worrisome, plus 87. So I'm, I'm happy with this result now. This looks like really where the Terminator would be. Of course, um, it's possible that it's just a false positive. You'll notice how I slowed down there because I'm now wondering if there's really that huge of a difference between ITRF-93 and IAU-Earth, which there should not be, by the way. So let's take a look here. Compiled. Run. Do this. Huh. So I have no idea what the hell was going on yesterday that was breaking this. Maybe I just wasn't looking at it correctly. Um, off in an issue. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and keep this as ITRF-93, but I'm going to make a little note here. Um, Best frame for Fram for Earth is ITRF 93, not IAU Earth. Though both really should work pretty well. I mean, for the accuracy that we need, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now that we've figured out that it's working fine for the Equinox, um, let's do it for, oh, I don't know, right now. But first, but first, let's see if we can find the. Um, piece of crap that I had. Why is this still up here? Uh, that basically the sun stuff for that I... Yay, I didn't forget to bookmark... Oh, I did forget to bookmark it, but okay. So... This isn't actually great because it's very close to midnight um, in the United Kingdom, um, in, in in UTC. In fact, it is 23 hours and 33 minutes UTC, as it says right up here. So, it's pos the results I'm going to get are going to look very, very. Um, the, re the results I'm going to get are going to look kind of strange. Um, uh, they're going to look, sorry, not strange. They're going to look very similar to the ones we just had which means it's not going to be really easy to check to see if this is um, this is correct. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, let's see. So there's a couple of ways around this. One is to, I wish that my frickin' program did a better job of letting me, um, letting me change. Uh, and the other way of doing this is I forgot there's a program that we have, that I have, called X-Earth that probably is now called X-Planet. And I need to Make a note to myself. Have I? I should have aliased X Earth by now. Uh, let me just reload the aliases just in case. Yeah, there we go. It's X Planet now, but it used to be X Earth. So this is X Earth, and what it does is, be by default, which I didn't mean to do, it places an image on the background. So can't really even see. It. I don't even want to see it there. So I probably need to, um, okay, now I need to see what the hell I've done to my root window. Um, la, 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 la. I think I have created a little picture of the earth on it. Let's see, though. No, it's cool. It's totally black and white. Um, I don't even think I have this set, and I need to change it to something that's not stupid. Why is there no X in it, Rec? Am I not mounted where I am? Okay. Wow. I want to set it to sort of a neutral color. Um, that's terrible. That's going to just be black. Well, this is how we did it in the olden days, but it looks terrible now. I'm trying to find one that isn't a perfect... There we go. That's ugly, though. Um, 
don't want to spend too much time on this, and I already have. So let's just say do we want solid black. How about solid gray, just to make it even more kind of bizarre and bland. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we're going to get back to actually doing something that's slightly less useless. And um, oh yeah, we're going to use X Earth if we actually get it to run. First of all, I wanted to run it in a window. Okay, good. So this is X Earth um, running in a window that's currently showing um, it's pretty dark every place in the world that's uninteresting. So that's not what we want. Um, let's go ahead and make a little bit of an effort. Let's go ahead and make a little bit of an effort to find some options for X Earth that might be useful. Uh, and there's a lot of options here, most of which are ones we will not need today. And today is actually the 27th. Uh, so X Earth minus center. And I think we're going to say, say center is zero, zero. That's just the point where the, uh, the prime meridian meets um, the equator minus date, and this is the thing we can mess with, this is the, this is kind of the reason I wanted to do this, and this is uh, one other thing I want to, we really do need to change, so this is the summer equinox, we can look at other dates too, uh, dynamic origin, ephemeris file, god, this does a ton of crap, this might be an example of a program that started having a really good, um, having a really good uh, original minimalism to it, that has now grown far too big, and it has too many options, so that if you want to use it, very simply, it's a little bit harder. Um, and I want Mercator, um, which I think they've changed now to projection. Um, and we could do this or cylindrical. Either one will work. I, but we need one that we can we can sort of look at uh, as a flat map, not because that's how we're doing everything else. Um, kind of. Let's just pretend that made sense. Okay. Yep. Once again. Uh, I forgot the most important option, kind of, which is minus window, of course. I don't know if this backgrounds itself. It might. Okay. So that is the Terminator line right for right now. Wait a minute. Uh, that looks up. I think I want a cylindrical projection. And this does not look like it's accepting the date correctly. So let's see. Um, Let's see how it needs the. Well, let me try a different date. Let me try the um, the opposite of this date, which is this date. And if it looks the same, then we know that. Oh, shiny. Um, so it did accept the date, I guess, but this still doesn't look right. Um, because at that time we would have midnight sun, you know, going up to, to here. Let me see if there's a, a cylindrical projection, and. Okay, minus window, minus proj, sill. Um, and let's see why it complains about that. Proje oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wow. So it is minus, uh, let's see. No, I guess we could do minus projection. Um, I ha have to know what ancient is. Just have to. I like that. That's kind of the one I wanted to do for my star map program. It is Pomodoro time. We are skipping it because it is the first time. Okay. I like that projection. But we can't really use it here. Azimuthal might be the one that I mean by cylindrical. It might not be. We'll find out. Oh, that's the... Uh, this is the... Well, this is actually beyond the Flat Earther's uh, projection. This is the projection the United Nations uses. If you put the, the North Pole at the center, it's the one the Flat Earthers believe in, I think. Um, the Bond projection. Bond. Ooh. It's a heart. Very cute. Not useful. Equal area, I think, is going to be the Lambert equal area projection. Um, I have no idea. Nom nom a mnemonic. M mnemonic might be the one I'm thinking of. No, that's way too, sh too shiny and... Okay, hemisphere sounds like I'm only get one hemisphere. Ico, that's just a, such a big name. I want to know what that is. Shiny. Um, 
Oh, this is the Lambert equal area projection. Yeah, which stretches and, you know, it stretches uh, vertically instead of horizontally. Still not good. We already did Mercator. Come on, man. Someone find us a... A rectangular might be the one I want. Molly wide. Cool. It's wide. Looks like Molly. But no. Um, Peter's projection. That's closer to what we want, but I think... I think rectangular is going to be the one we want. But let's take a look at polyconic real quick. Ooh, that's ugly. Rectangular, I think, is what we mean by what I mean by cylindrical. This is an equal area project. Equal project. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Okay. So this, I guess, that could be accurate for right now. But let's go ahead and do it with the uh, the two dates, uh, 2020. 0622, and apparently does not background itself. And then the same thing, but with 1222. And if these are the same, it means we've obviously done something wrong. And they look pretty dark. Ooh, they're not the same. This goes deeper than that. But damn, they look very close to being the same. Is that the only difference there really is? I mean, that's a tremendously small difference. I'm not happy about that. But I guess this is Midnight Sun for uh, for Alaska. I mean, this is Midnight Dark, always darkness for Alaska. And over here, yeah, I guess that is permanent um, shininess for um, for Alaska as well. I am not happy about that. Whoa. Interestingly, that's that might be is that daylight savings time? Or is that just the fact that the equator is much darker? Let's see. And this one, yeah, okay. We already have the sun setting in northeastern Canada. Here we do not okay, maybe it is, maybe it is actually accepting my date. Um so I'm not happy about that. Let's see if we can do it more cleverly. Yeah, unfortunately, X Earth has a limitation as to um, as to how accurate it's going to be, and it doesn't have uh, latitude and longitude lines either. So, so maybe we can go to uh, time and day date dot com, um, which I hate doing because I don't like them. Um, because they are commercial and everything in the world should be free. Uh, let's see. Uh, free countdown window. Oh, they have a. Um, I don't think we we need to go that far, but let's see if there's a way we can t type in a date. Um, time zones calendar. Let's take a look at this. So let's just randomly choose a day. This one, June seventeenth. Okay, already not good. Okay, June. Um, Epa. Um, that's a good rate, by the way. Sun calculator. Um, day and night world map. Yeah, we're now we're cooking with gas. Um, oh, all right. We can also jump ahead and behind. Let's jump ahead to um, oh, okay. Or we could actually just do it wherever they want. So let's do it six seventeen at oh, I don't know, fourteen hours and forty four minutes uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Okay. Very shiny, very nice. Still, is this still a Google map? It is not a Google map. It must be a Google map, right? Because it says... Satellite? That can't... This has to be a Google map, right? I mean... No, it's not. Wow, it's a... St oh, it's a fixed... They're using the fixed image um, API of Google Maps. Nothing wrong with that, but it's... Um, it's kind of a freaking pain in the ass to... Uh, to um, 
So now the question is, um, have they already done this? Do they already have a, oh, they probably have a Terminator for Earth, not for other planets, though. Okay. So, yeah, that's not really what I want. I need something that where we can um, look at the, oh, and this is also not a Mercator projection, so it's definitely not Google Maps. Um, oops, caps lock. Day-night Terminator on Google Maps. Let's see if we can do that. Um, wow. The web browser version doesn't have one yet. Now, this is a pretty old, well, not that old. So, apparently, that's not good. Okay, here we go. Beta version, I'm happy with it because... And they forgot to update their key. Gotta love it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are doing that, so it's not really a, a bad thing. Um, I mean, I, I updated mine, you know, just FYI. Um, okay, so this guy did nothing better than I did, except he didn't bother to update his freaking piece of frick, frick, frick. Um, let's see. So let's see if we can go back. Ooh, shiny. That's not what I meant to do, though. Um, where the hell is my search page? Oh, there it is. Nope, also wrong. That's the one I want. Okay. In, oh, here we go. This might be what we want. And in case you're wondering, I do have a backup plan uh, above and beyond. Oops. Yay, this this one moves. Um, and this one looks like we can go 17, because now I'm just sort of fixated on 17. June 2020 at about, I don't know, 8 a.m. our time, maybe? Okay. The sun. Now, one nice thing about this is this goes off way to the edge, so it's really hard to read. Okay. So... Um, 17 June at 8.46, and I think they're using, yeah, my time zone, the bastards. They really need to fix... Firefox to not send that out. Um, okay. So, um, and it was 8.46.30 my time, which is going to be 14.46.30 GMT, I think. Um, okay. Let's try this. Um, let's do this, let's re-make the program, I, I don't know if that actually ran, but let's, well we can do this now, we can always, first we'll look at it from GNU plot, ah, that looks pretty cool actually, I like that, and it kind of looks like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. No, it looks like, god damn it, why don't they make this bigger? <sighs> Tell you, some people. Okay, so what this is saying is that um, the canonical line of sunset, we're using the 90 degree line, so this is not quite, th well, actually, maybe we're not. Maybe we are using the right line. Okay, so where is the, um, trying to find a place on the Earth where this would be, Oh, wow. So let's just dig in here, I guess. What the hell? Okay. Yeah, this might not be... We might have hitched our boat to the wrong thing here. So it's kind of near Nampula. Um... And let's just, oh, actually we didn't, so now pull, uh, actually let's go ahead and do a, um, what, I don't have that alias? Seriously. Um, let's see where Nampula's at. Minus 15 degrees latitude, so, and about 39.2 longitude. So on the left, on the right side we're looking for minus 15. 
that's the other Terminator, I'm guessing. And... Okay, minus 124. So that's not looking correct. Um, so the weird thing is, though, we did see that the shape was generally correct. Um, but apparently the positions of the uh, Terminator were not. So let's take, a, let's take another look at that. Let's see what it thinks the subsolar point is. So we will do this. Okay, so it seems, so this goes from minus 180 to 180, as one would expect. And it looks like it is saying the Terminator... Excuse me. Uh, rather, the, uh, the subsolar point would be on the negative 40-ish longitude line. Where in reality, it is at the... somewhere else. Um, let's see, I don't know if it'll, oh yeah, it does. Minus 42.2, and this is giving us, yeah, I believe that is minus 42.2. So once again, we are stymied as to why we're not getting the right results. I mean, this is, um, right here at minus 15. Well, actually, we can actually zoom in on this. Um... So why are we not... Maybe I'm just reading it wrong. This is kind of weird. Um, okay. Alright, so when we have minus 15 here, uh, one of the points is 40... Oh, this might be the one we're looking for, actually. Never mind. Uh, 41 degrees. Let's see if that's correct. I mean, that... We did a look up for Nampula, or whatever it was. Um... Uh, now I'm going to get it wrong. Oh, there we are. 39 degrees, and this one is saying... Oh, yeah, that's actually okay. Never mind. Okay. So it looks like we have successfully found the um, the Terminator for Earth. Now, that was not the interesting part of the problem, of course. The interesting parts of... There's several interesting parts of the problem. Uh, one of which is, can we find the Terminator... Uh, for uh, Mars. That was sort of the more... Let me go ahead and save this to get just in case. Because I'm freaking paranoid. Um, um, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So now, we're still not doing the full uh, send the arguments in from the command line, which we should be doing. Uh, but let's, let's just go ahead and... And because I'm very lazy, we're going to set the time to now. Now being now. Okay. So this should be... And I guess it to be accurate here, I should say... Actually, I think I can just do this. Um, and again, this will all become um, automated in the actual program. We're not going to specify it, uh, neither in the program nor in the um, nor in the command line. This should be automatically computable. So, if I'm doing this correctly, this should find the points on Mars where the sun is just rising or setting right now. Uh, I am very, very skeptical that I've done this correctly, but who knows. Okay, it did run. And now, well, actually, you know what, let's do this. Um, we'll call that temp Mars, pro minus two, 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 two. temp Mars, so you can do that text. And then we will say GNU plot. So this is what we kind of, again, this is actually looking very symmetrical, but whatever. Okay. 
So now we bring up our good friend Stellarium. And we have to do this because I remount every time. And let's see if this is one of the screens that allow me to run it. It is apparently. Yes, good. Okay, and now... By the way, Miglobite, one of my fav favorite streamers, made a journey to the sun on her stream. I am not quite prepared to do that, but we are prepared to go to Mars. So that should be less exciting than what Miglobite did, but um, still somewhat exciting. So we'll change our location here to uh, planet. Uh, if we can find it. Hang on. No! Piece of shit. M. There we go. Mars. Okay. Doesn't really matter where we are on Mars because we're actually looking for points of sunset. We're going to put them in. So we want to do this. We want... Don't want the equatorial grid. Don't need the constellation boundaries. Uh, we do want the ground. We do want the atmosphere on Mars. Isn't that great? <laughs> but the prices... <laughs> All right. So let's look at this for the sun here. That is, um, it's also freeze freaking time. And the sun is 42 degrees below at this point. So now, la 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 la. Oh, shiny! I want to be on Mars now. What the? Oh yeah, because we're still using a um, the horizon that's built for Earth. I think we can fix Let me fix that. It's, I don't really like that Earth horizon there. Um, let's see. I think that's either F2 or F4. Um, Star Lord. Landscape. There's a real basic landscape called the. Um, called the Freeze the Computer landscape that we're using now. Um, it's very, very useful. Um. No, I want to go to landscape. And zero horizon. That is what we want. Shiny. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at these numbers. Um, got too many windows up. Let's go ahead and do this, that, and that. And let's see. Where are we... Um, I think Temp GNU will have the list of points that we want. So what this says is if you go to this location on Mars, um, let's go to this. This is closer to 32 latitude, minus 48 longitude, we should be seeing the sunrise. So that's 32 latitude. So we'll just do this. 32. And I kind of wish I remembered what the other number was. I am such a moron. Minus 48.29. So this is like 48. Close enough. And do we just see the sun rising or setting? I mean, it certainly looks like we were close. Oh, yeah. Very close. And there it is, Mr. Tiny, teeny little sun. Um, wow. Wow, Mars has a thick atmosphere. That's kind of weird. That's maybe it's how low is it though? Let's see. Oh, 46 minutes above, so it is very, very low. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two.
and we are almost back. And we are back. Okay, so it looks like whatever I'm doing has some degree of validity. So now what we need to do is, well, several things. So now let's try to get our options from get opts. And let's go ahead and create a um, usage string. Dollar sign zero, which is dollar sign argv zero, is the name of the program itself. So we'll say uh, minus ID naif ID. Um, and I'm already hesitating as to whether that's what I really want to do. Uh, minus ID naif ID and minus time time in Unix seconds. So this is kind of ugly, but I mean this is very minimal because if you don't have the naif ID, you'll have to find it. And if you have the time in some other format, you'll have to convert it to Unix seconds. However, I think for right now, I'm okay with that. And, oh yeah. Okay, so now I'm already kind of doing something bad, which is... Um, there's two formats for uh, options in, C in, in everything, pretty much. One is this form, which is minus uh, thing space thing. And the other is this format, which I think I, I prefer in my Perl libraries, so I should do it this way. It's minus minus option name equals option value. And so zero or one. Okay. And unfortunately, I don't think we have refraction model. Well, we I don't want to use refraction models. Uh, okay, and you know what? Refraction is computed for Earth only. So to do, error to set refraction for non-Earth. So Earth is going to be treated, treated as a special case. Okay, so now how do I get ops? I have no idea. I did it once and I forgot. So let's see if I can find it. Uh, I don't even know if I did it here. I might not have. Uh, no, I did not. I think I did it for one of my map programs. Um, so let's see what that... No. Alright, hang on. I thought I did it for this one. Um... Okay, to use minus H number of header lines. So I do, I do do it somewhere. Okay, while well opt equals get opt arc. While? Oh, that's right. This is this is a format of how you um, how you get things. So this is, and I think you need unisted.h for all this magic to work. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this line, and we'll tweak it. Obviously, um, I'm actually kind of worried that this might not do it the correct way either. So we do have this uh, we do have this ugliness that this might not be the correct usage. So let's go ahead. Uh, this should not compile at all. If this compiles, I'll be very very surprised. Cause I, I'm pretty sure we need cool. It's not what I wanted, but cool. So Terminator, yeah, get opt opt. And oh, okay, okay. Uh, wow, the only problem it had with that was uh, that I didn't declare my variables. Uh, let me go ahead and load up the other one, so we can declare the right variables. And so opt. Uh, is assigned... <laughs> wow! That cannot be correct. Um, I mean... I'm setting opt equal to... that... I'm not sure how that works. Okay, that's just weird. 
So if get opt returns a string, but it doesn't appear to return a string. It appears to do magic. Cool. Um, I guess I'll just do this. I'm very, very concerned though. Oh, that's actually a default. Um, um, th there's something fishy here. Um, I don't think this is going to compile either, but I'm kind of curious as to why it won't compile. Implicit, okay, so that's why we do need, uh, I think, Unistead, UniSTD is the magic. Um, uh, there's actually a, there's actually a tutorial on uh, how to use get opts in C. Um, let's see, here we go. <laughs> okay, I th I'm almost sure this is the thing I need to include now. Now... It's good how um, the ads block up the actual content. I like that. Can I block... I really need to install Adblocker Pro here, uh, but until then, um, okay, so, uh, let me see if I can find one that's better and allows me to, oh, Long options. That's that's what we call these other kinds of options. Um, and this is good news, so they shouldn't have any advertising on it either. Good deal. Okay, here we go. Um, get up long. Oh, so that's just an other way of saying. Okay. Okay, so it really is very simple, except we use get up long, and we need to include um, the unstud thing. Why, oh why, what does unstud do? I thought it... Really, the one time I need you to actually do a search, you don't. Um... Oh, so that might include get opt, and that's a, and that might be just a nice thing to have in general. So let's go ahead and include that, and let's even be nice and include it up here where it kind of belongs. Okay. So now, get opt long. Um. I guess we'll go ahead and use the right ones, right? So it's going to be ID time. I'm already doubting that I want to call these things like this. Fuck. Okay, and then the, now I'm questioning myself for something that is actually not great. Arg. ID and time I'm probably okay with. This I think I'll just call refer, refract. That's a sort of a compromise between too much and too little. Okay. Alrighty, so now this should just print um, ADI opt org. Opt org is magic somehow. 
Uh, let's go ahead and open with this. Um, uh, let's see, where does Optar come from, though? So, if C, get op long, long options. Is that where I pass into it? Let's see. Ah, man. So, opt's an integer. ID time refract. There should be more parameters there, shouldn't there? And uh, get opt long. Yeah. Yeah, okay, hang on. I think maybe I copied it incorrectly. Um. What what bugs me here is that opt org does not actually make sense. Um, there's no place that I seem to define it, unless it's in no yeah. There's no place where I define it. So let's look at this mystery of what the hell opt org is. Oh. Okay, hang on. This might be something. So I guess optarg is magic. I mean, it says extern char star. Oh, maybe it's defined by um, one of these other libraries. This is just weird. This shouldn't work. This is very ugly, but C is very ugly. But usually not in this way. Okay. Error expected prend before. Um. Okay. Again, the, the problems here are very minimal. Um, while int opt equals... Oh. Int opt equals get opt. That should actually be okay. Um, I think we can be a little bit nicer about this. So while int op is equal to this, if opt equal equals minus one, break. There. So that's an easier way to break out of it without having to do a double assignment and check at the same time. So what this does unexpected expected expression before int. Um, the only thing I can think of is I have not. Let's see. Um, maybe the space was unhappy. That's very weird, though. Line 23. Oh, opt-in. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, wait, what? Maybe it doesn't like me doing what I'm doing here. So we'll just say int opt out here. Um, it lets me do it for for loops, but maybe not for while loops. Just kind of one of the wonderful inconsistencies of C. Implicit declaration reform. Get opt. So maybe I do need get opts. Okay, so we'll go ahead and keep this one because I like this one. Uh, get opts. I hope that's the right one, but it'll tell me if it's not. Uh, get opt. <laughs> So I get, apparently to get long options, you need something that you don't need otherwise. Um, so now's the time when we say, screw it, we'll have ketchup. A line from whose line is it anyway? Um, so we're going to go ahead and use short options. ID, naif ID, time. So we're going to compromise. We're going to use long options. Short options, but we're going to use them with full names, just to make our lives a little bit more difficult. Um, so let's see. Just get up the regular one. Uh, to get up, da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. and then I guess we might as well print. Um, uh, the Eta I Optarg. No, I think that's actually what we do want to print. 
Yeah, we don't need... Well, yeah, that, that, that should be okay. All right, 900 billion times the charm. Suggest parentheses are... Assignment you... Okay, yes. It's, it's basically saying that... Um, oh... Because this while statement should actually be hmm. I kind of wonder if we actually need this opt in here. We just want to make sure this isn't minus one, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm, okay, okay, okay. So now we could say this is probably very bad. While get opt is not equal to minus one, do this. The problem here is we're going to have no way of keeping track of which one we're looking at. And that's probably a bad thing. Uh, this should compile, actually. Yeah, okay. So BC Terminator. Um, probably not exact. There's no options here. So let's see. Minus I15. 16. Close enough. Ooh. That's not good. Oh, minus ID. This is one of the other problems, is if you don't do this exactly right, it gets annoyed. Wow. Okay. Um. Okay, what if we do this? Okay, so that doesn't kill it. Um, okay, so get up, da da da, not equal to minus one. Eight I. Well, I guess we just print out um, opt arg. We don't have to print out. Um, the, we don't have to convert it to a, a, an integer. Let's see. This is not going to work either, by the way. I can pretty much tell you that. Uh, so let me see if I can put in other op. This this is going to break even worse, I think, though. Yeah, there's something fundamentally bad that I'm doing here. Um, let's see. The only thing I oh oh hang on hang on hang on. Do we need a colon after this? I do need a colon after that. So this is end of options. Otherwise, it has no way of knowing. One more time. Let's just live dangerously. And do that. Segmentation fault. All right, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. 
So, a couple of things I could still try here. One of them is we, oh, I got rid of get opt. Okay. And the only thing I can think of is I haven't declared opt arg uh, to be anything. It's a, it's a, it comes from another place, but, um, okay. So let me just see if there's anywhere here where I define opt. Yeah, see, I don't. I shouldn't have to. Um. Well, let's see if we can do this without even printing it. Just see if that's the. Uh, okay. So it is the printf that's killing it. Um, so maybe printf as a string isn't a great idea. Let's print it as a um, pointer, uh, which should be fairly universal. Um, I mean, it's not going to work, but I like print. Oh, shit, that did work. I hate when that happens. Um, oh. Uh, oh. Hmm? I think maybe this is thinking of these as being individual options, like minus i, minus d, and when nil means that it doesn't have a value. So this might be... So apparently I cannot use... Uh, if I want to use more than... Oh, that's actually true, because minus id would mean minus i, minus d. So because I don't want to mess with c too much... I'm going to reduce these options to be i, t, and r. Um, the correct way to do this would be to use the, the long opts, which I'm tempted to do. And in fact, I'm so tempted to do it, I'm going to say, um, um, use long opts later, question uh, mark. But for right now, we'll just fuck with this. And now this way, we should get uh, question marks for the values that are not assigned, according to the... Oh, actually, hang on, this might be for a different thing. I'll see what this does. D, I'm refract. That's not what we wanted. Um, oh. Yeah, it might be useful if I did this correctly. I didn't know you could remove the um, space between them and still get what you wanted, but anyway. 16, there we go. And apparently, you can do this and leave one of them like that. I, I never knew that. I learned something new there. Okay. I really want to use long opts, though. So. Let me go ahead and um, getify this. And. Um, then let's let's go ahead and go through the pain of using long opts because it's more consistent with my programming style. Not that I really have a pro, not that I have style of any sort. Um, but um, all right. So let's look at the. Ex I don't want to really necessarily use their whole example here from uh, get opts, but I do want to use uh, the, um, so long options must be like a array of, well actually is it, what is long options? Is that one of those magic things that just shows up if you use get opt long? Uh, anyway, let's do this. Um, so get up long returns minus one when it's all done. Uh, and I'm almost sure we don't want to um, not keep track of what, what variable we're on, but that's not equal to minus one, but we're gonna try it this way. And so, so the, the, the bizarre thing here is where exactly are long options an option index defined, and I get the feeling they're defined outside for us. Um, oh, actually, hang on, they have a struct here. Um, that's not cool at all. 
You, do you have to give a struct for this? That's bullshit. Um. Ooh, I'm just gonna go back and forth on this. Um. This is not gonna. Well, it might work if it turns out this thing's a structure. And I've just created a uh, link to a structure. But let's see what this does. I think it's not going to work. Yeah, I think in this case it actually didn't even bother to compile. Uh, let's see. In, oh, right, because I need get opt. Motherfucker. Okay. Long options, option index. So long options. Can't just make it a pointer, can I? Can I make it a string? Mm, this looks hard, though. This looks like we have to go through some magic ugliness and create a struct in C, which I don't really even like, you know, writing in C. But let's see. Um, okay, let's see if there's another, um, a better, oh, here we are, a man page. Okay, so it looks like we send this thing. Uh, that's get up, not get up long. All right, so apparently they're very similar to each other. Um, get up long. Oh no, this looks like it actually does require um, a structure to hold these things, and the structure is okay. Fuck that. All right, so we're going to go... All right, I'm going to go ahead and gitify this and then pull back the version. Actually, I don't know how to do that. Um, let, me go ahead and, let me go ahead and push this version real quick. Uh, even though it's not good, I'll, I'll say bad version. And there should now be a way to pull back the old version by using reset head. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um... But let's see, uh, using git log and git reset head, I should be able to um, to reset this to the previous working version that we had. Uh, whoopee. Oh, and I think we also need to add the number of points n um, as, a, as a parameter. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, I actually need to pull it back before I can do anything else, so stand by, and get log for, I think I can do a log just for this program, yes I can, uh, get reset head to this version, now if I do this correctly I should be able to hit RR, nope, Yep, and kill it. And magically, our working version should show up again. That was not cool. Stand by. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me try putting it to the version before that one. See what this does now. I, God damn it. There is a way to do this using git tk. Um... Anyway. 
Let me do a git diff here. Oh. That definitely did something. So do I not mean reset head? Okay, so this... Um, Alright. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, this will only take us forever. So let me see what the diff is between the bad version. Git diff commit number commit hash uh, of astro vc terminator dot c and yeah this does what exactly what I want. So now how do I can I just say git reset or I don't need to say reset head do I? Yeah unstaged changes after reset. So. Not what I want. Hang on. La 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 la. Hopefully this time it'll work. No! <sighs> and, and let's see what the git diff is. Um, but it is, it is like to undo the changes. Well, let me see what, what what the instructions give me. I think it, I thought it was BC git reset head. Okay, now it says unstaged commits. Yep, I think I fucked this up. Um. All right. All right. Let's see. What, okay, great. That's not what I wanted to do. Did I actually do a commit there? No, I didn't. Okay. So git reset to this known good version unstaged unstaged changes after reset okay let's see what those unstaged changes are um okay they're exactly the ones i want so this should be the correct version now um Oh, maybe, no, no. Um, oh, actually, maybe I flipped the, did it the wrong way. Maybe I meant to pull this version. Yeah, let me, let me do that. Um, get invalid, get, okay, that's not what I meant to do. Get, um, Did I just do reset again? So now let's see what it looks like. Nope. <sighs> Motherfucker. Unstaged changes after reset. Um. So now if I do a BC get to tell me that oh shit, what? The fuck? Okay. What does that even mean? Here we go. Here we go. Get reset head. There we maybe go. Okay, now let's see what it looks like. Nope. Still wrong. In fact, I sort of undid what I wanted to do. Oh, I think I see what I need to do. I think I'm going to do a git reset of that. It should be fun. I need to do a git reset. So now we have unstaged changes. Now I need to add it to the list of things that's going to be committed. 
Okay, now let's make sure I have the correct version here. I do not. Um, let me go ahead and remove uh, BC Terminator C, and then I can do a git reset of the old version. Um, and okay, that totally didn't work. Um, because now I think I'm trying to delete it. I'm hoping reset head will get me back to where I was before. It, which it didn't. Um. Oh, checkout. That's what I want. God, I'm an idiot. Hello. Thank you for following. Hello, Mr. Bleeman. Uh, I actually just saw you subscri subscribe. Not subscribed. You, uh, followed me on Twitch, which is fantastic. I was in another window. Um, no, unfortunately, I was in another, um, in my, this is a VM. I was in my real machine because I had, because uh, this, this uses a mounted file system and it's kind of ugly to modify a m mounted file system. So I was doing some Git stuff in the other window. Um, I do not have any experience writing text editors, unfortunately. That is not really my, my thing. I use Emacs, which is highly programmable. Um, and, and so I, I love that. So hopefully you can you can hear me. Um, um, I okay. Well, you know I'll t I have typed that in. I guess. Let me know if you can't hear me, because that's even worse. If you can hear me, okay. Yes, you can hear me. Fantastic. Okay. So that was um, that was not great. Um, oh shit! What the hell? Oh wait. So I'm trying to restore a file that I had earlier in the correct form. Finally, um, there we go. And that's what I was trying to do. Um, took forever. And so now, okay. So now that I've restored it, I'm going to go ahead and do some more crap with it. Um, this is basically trying to find where the term, the line of sunrise sunset intersects a planet at a given time. So, vaguely interesting. So now we should be able to at least compile the damn thing. Good. And now it should be able to run and give me... Okay. Good deal. All right, um, it is something called Pomodoro time, uh, which means I'm gonna get up and walk around for a couple of minutes. So I'll be right back if you're still here. If not, that's cool too. So I'll back in about two minutes and two seconds.
Okay, I'll thank you for the kind words. I am back. Um, and let's let's see what's going on. Um, let's see. Okay. So we've I've just figured out through a hell of a lot of unnecessary um, steps that uh, how to use get opt. I was not able to use get opt long successfully. Um, and so the next question is what happens if we use more than one argument? And let's see here. Um, Okay. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out is which index I found. So if I give like, for example, here, if I give, let's say, just R and neither of the other two, it prints one, but how do I know that the R, that's the third option? And I get the feeling that there's something um, I'm not doing correctly to find that. So, um, well, let's see if I can do this. Because this is really ugly. See if we can keep track of which one we're on and if that helps any. So I do need to remake that. I do need to make sure it, it um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think it lets me do this unless I declare um, opt ID ahead of time. So we'll do that. Do this, and this should work. Suggest parentheses. Oh, yeah. I did that wrong. So opt ID is equal to this. Um, so while that thing is not equal to minus one, so this minus one is probably, okay, hang on. And I guess they suggest, oh, Right, so they want this in, in, um, oh wait, that should be fine. So while opt ID, okay, so, that's where I'm doing something wrong. Opt ID equals this, that is a, um, that is an assignment, and the whole thing is not equal to negative one then do this. Okay, that compiled at least. Okay. 114.1. That's, um... Not what I expected. Uh, I have no area of ex I know nothing, actually. I just kind of randomly get on the computer and type stuff, and sometimes things happen. Right now I'm looking at um, the SPICE astronomy libraries in C. Uh, and I'm trying, that's, that's part of this issue is, is trying to get, uh, is trying to use SPICE to find where uh, Terminator is, uh, you know, where the line of sunrise sunset is. Um, but then also, uh, if I can get this to generalize this, to create an API so other people can look it up, and you know directly on the web so that's that's the goal uh, but right now i'm having trouble even just figuring out how to get these options correct um one one four one Ooh, that's kool-aid man oh no it's blood trial i thought that was kool-aid man So let's see if this does anything. Okay. Yes. 
something is something's weird. Um. Oh, okay. So the return value here is not particularly useful. It's 114, it's 116. It's not really what I, it doesn't really help to tell me which, which thing I found. So maybe we need to go back to our review for getopt. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. If there are no more options, index. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Let's see some examples. And kind of Oh, is colon mean end of examples? Oh, so so opt is actually the character index of the option. Okay, okay. So we're, I shouldn't be printing it as a as a um, I shouldn't be printing it as a, uh, a number. I should be printing it as a character. I mean, same thing, but but probably easier to deal with. There we go. Okay, that makes sense. And I don't think I want default values, so basically this is going to be... Um, assign from opts. If opt id equal equal r uh, then we are going to assign, that's probably the least, actually I'm not even sure I want refraction. The refraction might be automatic here. Let's not look at that one. Um, so here we will need to define the variable time. Oh, and minus n is the number of points. That we definitely need. Um, so this will be ITRN in any order. I'm sort of curious as to whether I need this form or if I can just say ITRN all at once. Um, let's see. Well, what does the string here have to look like? Okay. So the thing I'm looking at here is for get opt is uh, the opt string. Let's see what the opt string is supposed to look like. For okay. Um, me okay. If there's text, okay. Um, times W, then, oh, if opstring contains W followed by a semicolon, oh, um, It's followed by a colon. The option require oh. If it's followed by two colons, it's an optional. Oh, okay, whatever. So apparently, um. Yeah, still have no idea what the hell this does. Let's let's try it like this. I get the feeling this is wrong, but I like to experiment in many ways. 
Um, oh, shit. And also, I need to stop redeclaring variables. Okay, so what does this do? Whoa. Um, I mean, this is just stupid. Uh, okay, there we go. R is null and T is null. Oh, this might mean that you can just set them as zero ones. Okay. So that was not a good idea. Let's not do that. Let's do that. It appears whatever the hell I've done, I have not made the options mandatory, which is fine. So if I do this, oh no, I definitely need to give it an option. I'd okay. So I guess colon colon would mean I probably don't care. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So now, if opt ID equals t time equals uh, Unix to et of a to i of opdarg. Um, now I could do an else if here, or I could even do a switch case if I wanted to, um, but I'm not going to. So we'll leave the second one, so we'll do an order. I is going to be the planet ID, right? So it's going, no, 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 no. It is going to be literally optar, because it has to be a string. T, we do convert it to um, an integer, and then we convert it from Unix time to ephemeris time. Um, So I guess all of these have to be defined up here. So I guess that could, in theory, be a char. Let's just be really cool and call it a char. Could it be a spice char? I don't know. Let's just leave it as a char. And then we want a, um, uh, I guess, refraction will be an integer. And number of points will be an integer. really no good abbreviation for, oh, how about ref yeah, there's really no good abbreviation for refract. We'll just leave it like that. Okay. So if it's I, we set the planet, which, oops, 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 which we need up here. Um, no, that's, sorry, shit. That has to be a string. Make it up to, I mean, no one's going to have a hundred character straight, but whatever. Okay, so if it's equal to option I, we have planet equals opdarg. If this is the time gets set, if it's R, and then we'll make this one N, obviously. And then we can say refract, refract equals, we'll just convert whatever's given to an integer, which is not interesting. And then N, also just convert to an integer. And I really should put some error testing in here. Um, okay, so if it's I, we set planet equal to the string valuation of this. Um, I'm not super happy about this. Time to the da, da, da. And actually I should not have to do this. Um, okay, well, let's do this. And then oh shit. If I'm gonna use Unix to ET, I need to furnish the kernel ahead of time. So assign values from opts. So we do all this these declarations that we need ahead of time. And 
So the only one we really need to do is to get the frame. That's one thing we're not given from planet. And also, I don't really care about planet being... Well, I guess we'll leave it that way, but planet, it could be a, a moon or something, really. Okay. Now, I've done this before. I don't remember how, but... There's definitely a way to do this. Yep. Alrighty, let's see how we get the frame here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um. Okay. Now there should be a way to get this function where the first parameter is an integer, not a, um, not a string. So let me take a quick look at this function here um, and see if there's a version of it that does not, that does not require a name but can use an, an integer. Although technically I guess it doesn't matter because we have the name as a string anyway. Um, <laughs> um okay so let's just break up bc spice occultations Yeah, the switch state mode would actually kind of be the correct thing to do there. Um, I mean, this this works. Um, the only thing I don't like about the switch statement is having to say um, you have to put that special like weird escape thing or whatever at the end of each case statement instead of you know if we could have a statement where you could say switch case and then for each case give one statement and not have a drop through automatically, I'd be I'd be down with that. Um, Okay, so get frame from, I think this will work. Um, okay. Oops. Planet frame ID, which should be a uh, planet frame, and found. So all of these obviously need to be Okay, so planet frame ID is going to be an integer. Um, and planet frame is going to be a string, which should be more than... Should be 100 characters long, which should be more than enough for any of the, the frames we need. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two minutes and two seconds. And we are almost back. And we are probably back.
Okay. We're back. Okay, so now if this is correct, planet's a string. 100 is the size of the uh, string that we want back. Um, planet frame ID is going to be an integer that we get back. Planet frame is going to be a string that we get back. Oh, and found has to be a boolean. Okay. And also... Well, actually, we should probably just call this frame to be consistent. Okay. So here we have planet time frame planet na, da da da. Okay. This probably won't work, but it might get close. Um is better from the char store. Oh. So what is planet is equal to Optorg is a string, right? I mean Oh yeah, because you can't really copy strings like this. Um Oh, and I can't even actually um, use address of here because Optar is going to change. So I need to do stir copy. Isn't that wonderful? I don't even know if I ever used stir copy before. I do. Um, so it's the target string, which is planet. Okay, so will that work? Take a look. Oh, now it really doesn't like it. Frame undeclared. Oh, right, because I decided I was going to use frame instead of planet frame. Um, variable refract. Yeah, it, that's probably okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So now the only pro there should just be a warning here. Time may be used and initialized, but those are just warnings. Endpoints may be used. So I guess what we can do here is just to avoid that sort of crap, is go ahead and assign artificial uh, values to these if no one bothers to. So this could be 100. Um, okay. So by default, it's going to do something fairly pointless, but. Uh, refract set, but nah. You know what? I don't even think I can do refraction anymore. So screw it. So we'll just leave this here. Um, so maybe we will still use long ops one day. But for now, we are not going to do that. We are not going to even assign a variable for a refract. And now we should have everything we need. Yep. String C name has... Oh, yeah. Because now we can't actually fake it anymore. Uh, let's call it ID 100. IAU 399 has no associated... Damn it. I knew that was going to be an issue. Okay. I'm going to try a little bit harder to find something that gets me a frame um, uh, to associated frame. So there should be a way to get this using the ID, class and class ID. That might be it. So those are the only two functions that do it, so let's see what this does. Uh, class of frame. The ID code. Maximum length. Uh, 
Uh, hmm. This may not be what I need either. Okay. Let me go ahead and um, do something that I probably should be doing better anyway. Um, so over here, blah, 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 blah. I sh probably should also be checking for arguments. I'm not going to do that either. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so convert parameters to strings complain if not found. And the reason we need to do this um, is because we want to use we have to use the name when we try to find the frame. This is fairly stupid. So let's see if we can yada 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 error to set refraction cam opt ID that's just for for this endpoints planet frame ID which I think if we're going to be consistent we should say frame ID uh, time is time um, I'll leave planet as planet. It's not really always a planet, though. Okay. So now... So now, once we've decided what the user wants, we're going to go ahead and um, convert planet to string, complain if not found. Okay. So we're going to basically do this. Da, 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 da. I think I already have found... Yeah, I do have found defined as a boolean. Um... So if not found, and then we will exit out of this. So we take the, um, god damn it, A to I of planet, because it, we need the, for bod C to NC, we actually need the, um, the ID. Uh, store length, which is, let's say, 100. The, okay. Um... So just the name. There's only one thing we're naming here, so we can we can get away with saying things like just name. Um, name for name ID not found, and of course this would be um, okay. Hang on. <laughs> you know what? We if we're gonna do it this way, <coughs> let's just say um, this could just be. Oh, actually, we can't do that. Um, we'll just call this the ID here, and we will, in fact, do. Um, ID equals A to I uh, ask you to integer of planet. That's probably a little bit cleaner. And just in case no one wants to sign us an ID um, I'll let this, I'll let this, it's going to complain but I'll let, I'll let it go. I'll let it complain for right now. Okay. So what we want to do here is we want to take the ID that we have found uh, 100 name, that's fine, found, not found, print name for naif ID, cannot be found um, for ID. Except one. Otherwise, we might as well print out the freaking piece of shit. Not that I'm bitter. Uh, name, frame, I'm going to go ahead and compute the frame and put them both in here at once. So the name of the planet is going to be name, and the frame of the planet will be, if we can get it. Uh, so now we're going to say frame from planet. Uh, so now we have a name. We can use that. Uh, we can use frame ID, um, which I don't care about. Frame, which I do care about, and found. And then, if we're going to be obnoxious, we might as well say, if not found, um, uh, 
uh, frame not found for I have Moon, so this is just going to be the ID of the planet, and this is going to be the name we just got from up. Assuming we got it, this will be the name for the thing above it. Okay. So now, I just want to see if this part of it works. So let me just do this. Because I, if this doesn't work, we're fucked anyway. Let's see. Um. Oh, yeah. Name and frame. And I guess we don't, I guess we want to be clever. We could say, I don't really care about the frame ID. Um, ID might be used on the, yeah, it's okay. So the ID is going to be defaulting to Earth. And the only thing that looks like could be bad is that frame ID, but I think frame ID is always assigned. Yes, finally. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. The Earth's default frame is, in fact, um, ITRF 93. Okay. Um... The only bad thing here is, in, in theory, in theory, if you give no arguments, it should really kind of tell you how to use this program. Um, instead of giving default values to everything. Um, but all right, that's not. Well, that's not too bad. Let's uh, make pipe to less. Okay. So without options, it'll say name earth frame IT. Okay. So uh, let's say I want Mars. I guess time's not an issue because I'm not. Um, oh. That's not cool. ID equals. A to I of Optarg. Yeah, that would be kind of useful if I did that. Okay, term da da da. Mars, okay, that's what I expected. And now Jupiter, frame IU Jupiter. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, actually, there's no reason it won't. This is the Berry Center. Yeah, there is no frame for the Berry Center. Uh, this is Venus. Uh, this is Mercury. I think this is Cirrus. No. No? Oh, there it is. Oh, it doesn't have a frame. Wow. Didn't know that. It exists. Doesn't have a frame, though. Okay. So this is working. I'm going to go ahead and, on the other machine, push it to Git. Um, okay. So now we have the options part working. We can get the frame, we can print the um, name and frame, which we should probably keep doing anyway. Um, and it turns out we do not need to fix the IAU Earth frame. It automatically uses ITRF 93. So now, da -da -da -da, so planet here will be ID. Oh shit, is it? Hang on, is it, is it ID or is it planet? Um, name, time, frame, name, endpoints. All right. Now, it still isn't quite perfect, but we're, we're pretty close now. So, assuming this works, we're pretty close now. Um... Unused variable planet, we don't need that. We have name now. So we can do this. I like clean compiles, even though it has absolutely no effect on Okay, so now we can do... Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, Mercury. Um, 
Yeah, the only problem here is, of course, this is for time zero. Um, I, w I mean, that's a well-defined time, but it's not right now, so let's see. So let's go ahead and do it for time... And this is really ugly. We'll do it for the current time, but we'll actually physically put it in there. Okay. And then let's do it for 10 points. Or let's not do it for 10 points. Let's see. N points equals A to I opt arg. That should work. Do I not have it defined? Um, oh. Uh, shit. This really should be end points, because that's how many, but it, should, it shouldn't crash because, oh. Maybe when I try to print it, it's going to crash, that's why. Okay. I get the feeling I've done something else that's seriously wrong here, but let's, for right now, just see if that helps. If I don't give in, it's fine, but if I give in, it doesn't work. So this problem is with obviously with parsing in here. Um, it always should work. I mean, mm, fact, why don't I go ahead and print all of them. Um, ID, time, and endpoints. Something is fishy. Let's see what this does. Oh. Oh, 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 that's what's wrong. One of these things does not have the right. Uh, oh. Okay. So that really should be A to F. And that actually might be what's screwing up the N, because I'm sucking up too much data from the other one. Um. Okay, so that works and tells me that n is 100. When I do n is 10, it really doesn't like me. I could even say n is 100 and it doesn't like me. Pomodoro time, back in 2 and 2. Okay, and we're almost back. And we're back. Okay. So I think I figured out what's wrong. I think I need a colon after the N. Otherwise, it looks like N doesn't require value. So let's see if that fixed it. Good deal. Also good deal. Okay. Um, for right now, I'm okay with this uh, format. Um, 
we really don't need the radius of Mercury at every point. Um, that is uh, unnecessary. So I'm going to say temp merc.text. And then just to make things ugly, well, no. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So this is saying at minus three longitude, uh, we're hitting the equator. So let's go ahead and go to, um, let's go ahead and go see if I still have Stellarium up. I do not, but I can, because it's a freaking pain, that's why. All right, so we're going to bring up Stellarium. We're going to go to Mercury. And of course, Mercury is in, while it's coming up, I'll babble incoherently. Mercury is an atomic element. It's a Greek, it's a Roman god, I think. Hermes is the Greek equivalent. And of course, it is a planet. Um, so let's go ahead and go there in its planetary sense. Um, and we're off to, no, we're not. We're off to Mercury, which looks surprisingly like Earth. Um, oh yeah, we need to turn off constellation boundaries, no equatorial lines. Uh, we do want the ground, we do want atmosphere, although Mercury doesn't really have. Oh, and I need to straighten out the horizon as well. Okay, so, whoa, that was weird. Okay, so here it is, Mercury. And I guess if we want to be accurate, we should find the sun. And the sun, of course, at this point is, this point in, in Mercury um, position is under the, uh, is under the horizon. So now if we change these numbers using something, using the uh, values we just got over here. So if we go to a minus 3.26 longitude, zero, uh, basically the equator. Um, it's really too bad we can't put this into, um, I wonder if we can put this into, um, decimal notation. We'll accept that. Minus 3.263. Oh, well, it will. And we are not at any elevation. Okay, so let's see if this is a point where the sun is... Let's also see if this is a point where we can freaking stop time. Okay, so the sun here has an altitude of negative one degree, and I think that is correct because that's the the um, the width of the sun here is enough that it's it could be. Um, the t well, let's see. Altitude is minus one minute and eleven seconds of arc. Oh, that's actually very. And what's the angular width here? Parent diameter is one degree. So either the sun is above the horizon right now, which doesn't look like, oh, maybe it is. Oh, right, because I'm using the stupid um, incorrect. I need to save these options once I get them right. Um, although I don't know if I want to save myself on, uh, on Mercury. But we definitely want to save the zero horizon. Um, Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we can look at the sun as being, so this is, this is damn near where the sun is exactly sitting on the horizon. Um, which is not really what I expected. Because I was doing, um, I was expecting this to be the point of sunrise, not the point where the sun is exactly at the horizon. So this might be a bad thing. So, so it looks like if you go up on the, uh, in, in the northward direction, this is this remains pretty much the same. So let's try that. 
Let's go ahead and take our latitude number and move upwards. Yeah, and the sun is not really getting that much higher. Um, two minute, yeah, so it's going to be, okay. So it's going to be, um, let's go ahead and center the sun again. Let's see if we can find a number where it's, it's sufficiently different, um, from, you know, where the, where the, we need to go further west. Wow. Okay, so once we get up to like, um, 90 is the biggest this number should be able to become. Um, unfortunately, when we get close to 90, of course, there's a um, there's an other issue in the sense that there's a all the latitude the longitudes become very close together. So let's see if we can 82 is still pretty. Let's go ahead and see if we can go up to um, let's see if we can do this one and see what happens there. But it does look like this program is working uh, as intended. So now in theory, I should be able to cut and paste, if I can remember where. Let's do this one, 77.02. And this one. Um, this. Now this number should be like super accurate. Okay. So what is happening, and the, the, only, the only problem is I know this timestamp that I have here is a little bit forward of where uh, I, when I ran the program. Uh, it's a minor issue, but it is enough to maybe throw things off slightly. So it certainly does appear that the sun is very, very close to the horizon here. Um, and so I'm unhappy. Uh, because unless something is wrong here, the sun should, this is the umbral, uh, the umbral terminator which means it should be where the sun is uh, below, the, below the horizon completely. Uh, of course, it is possible because we're not using DE431 here. Um, it is possible that this is the difference between VSOP and DE431. Though this is, this is like insanely close to, um, to being zero. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. This is insanely close to being zero. Although what's interesting is if we go back in time a little bit, if that number gets, okay, so maybe when we did it, it was a little bit lower, but still 30 seconds of arc is very little, especially given the angular um, diameter of plus one degrees. So it should really be like 30 minutes of arc below the horizon, even if there's no uh, refraction uh, taken into account. Okay, um, so the next, the way to fix this problem here, which is sort of a sort of a major issue, is to um, to basically make Stellarium use um, the uh, the DE ephemeris, ephemerides, as it were. Um, so we go to dot config. I think it's. I don't know if Stellarium has its own directory though. Um, and, and this is actually one of the things that's on the project too. Okay. Um, so we have a Stellarium user guide 0.1801 PDF, which I'm pretty sure I don't actually have here. That would be too easy, but I can get it here. Um, actually, I think it's in still over here, but let's take a look. Oh no, I actually put it where it belongs in, in documentation. I am so awesome. Okay, so let me go ahead and link. Uh, <laughs> Please stand by. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and linked it over here and created a new directory called doc. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Hang on. Okay, now that should work.
What? No, 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 wrong. What the hell did I just do? All right, one more time. Okay. That should have broken it. Okay. So here it does tell you how to use the uh, DE ephemera Ds. Um, somewhere. Um, uh, advanced. Okay. The alternate planetary ephemera Ds. We already have them. We just need to kind of stick them in to... Um, Okay. You can be gone now. There's actually a way to get rid of that. I think like this. Okay. Um. Oh, that's right. You need the stupid kind of ephemerides. Um. I do have these, actually. Um. I have to get them specially because, in fact, they might be in my um, in my kernels directory. Uh, because uh, you, th there's ones in normal format called the BSP format that apparently it doesn't like. So I guess we're gonna use D431. Um, Woohoo! There it is. So, can be. Alternatively, you might add them to config, as. Um, okay. Well, you know what? Let's just actually put them in a directory called. Let's see. Hang on. In the installation directory or the user directory. Um, let's see if we can we can can just do that. So where the hell is the... You know what? This might be not what we want. Um, uh, we probably want to go ahead and tweak the configuration file. Um, let's see. The fast access avoids... Running. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Um... config.ini Now the nice thing is it's not going to tell us where config.ini is. I'm pretty sure it's in the dot .stellarium directory if there is one. Okay, good. Oh, good. Wow. I'm impressed. Alright, I'm going to make a quick backup of this before I mess with it. Which I think I can do. Yep. Still minus minus debug. Um, timestamps. Okay, so it, it's fine. Okay. So now, this is not going to work, obviously. But let's see what we can do. Uh, DE4. I don't think it's going to be already listed. So it needs to be in the section called Astro. Um, what are the comments? Oh, wow. I don't know if they're, they have a comment structure here. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, DE431 path. Oh, we obviously we'll obviously need to fix this. Uh, equals. They have fun, don't they? Um, home user spice kernels. This. And let's make sure that is actually where I put it. I don't know why I did that cut and paste because when you go to an X term, that's not going to matter. But anyway, there it is. So now, apparently, we have to do more than that, though. We have to go into the configuration pl panel. Um, okay. So now that we're running 10 billion things at once, F2. Um... I think I probably have to restart it to do this. So, so now that I have it, it's in the in the config file. Um, dun, 
Dun, dun, dun, dun. The time zone name for Europe. God damn it. There is no time zones on Jupiter. Everyone there is just really relaxed about time. Okay, so now it apparently doesn't. It apparently takes longer because it's one that loads the ephemerides. Um. Okay, so now. Okay, so now why the hell is it saying DE four thirty? DE four thirty one is high accuracy. Okay. Save settings. In fact, let me go back to save settings in just a minute here, because I do not really like what I'm doing with this. So, da 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 da. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, that just looks weird. I guess it's close to sunset or something. That still looks weird, though. So let me... well, shit, I'm not going to save this, never mind. Um, so now we should be able to go to Mercury. Okay. To find the sun, which is apparently at this location under this... okay, that's cool. Um, and let's go ahead and rerun our program here. So that we have, um, if in fact, oh, there we are. Okay, so right now, yeah, probably should run it from here. Okay. And so we will go ahead and stop the clock. Stop the clock. <coughs> okay, I did cover my hands, so you're currently safe from corona for the next few minutes. Um... Again, these numbers are really close to each other, which I don't like, but let's go ahead and use this one for latitude. God damn it. Uh, okay, the first of the 17s for latitude. And then this number for longitude. Okay, and then zero. Um, I guess we're done. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Um, so the sun's... Okay, that's interesting. So the sun's altitude here is minus 35 minutes of arc with an apparent diameter of one degree. So a half diameter of uh, 68 divided by 2, 34 minutes. So this is actually good. This is actually um, exactly where we want it. The top of the sun uh, will be just peeking over the horizon, uh, which is exactly what we want. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two. And we are almost back. Okay. 
And we are back. Okay. Oh my god, I've been going for 2 hours and 15 minutes. I'm probably going to go for a little bit more today. I'm feeling it, man. So the other thing we can ask about is where on the planet has the sun just fully risen? In other words, it is sort of starting to rise. It has finished rising. And that is an option. Well, let me, let me go ahead and save this real quick before we screw it up. Okay, apparently I've com committed a... Uh, created a uh, file called tell. Oh! That's dangerous. Yeah, that, that's a file that has some private information in it. Um... Okay... But let me make sure that file is... has gone. Um, and yeah, that would have been pretty damn dangerous. And uh, now I'm paranoid. Okay. I think I have successfully gotten rid of that file. But as an abundance of paranoia, the file is called tell. Good, it's gone. Okay, um, so this is telling us where the sun is just setting or rising, depending on where you are. Now we want to know how about when it's just finished setting or rising. Can we do that? And the answer, of course, is yes, we can. Um, okay, and the way to do that here is where we have the word umbra. Um, umbral. We could have the word pen umbral instead. Um, and we can go ahead and make that an option. So... Okay, gotta be a little bit careful here because I need to make sure that this is, um... big enough to hold the words umbral and penumbral, and I'm pretty sure if I do like that, it's not gonna work. If I type in a string there, it's gonna only give me enough room for that string. So let's go ahead. This is much bigger than we need it to be. Um... Um, default value for type. We'll say type equals umbral, unless you say otherwise. So then it's going to be I T N U. Okay, that's kind of a weird way of doing things. So um, I mean, if you said U zero. Uh, we could assume that means penumbral. Um, but that's a real, really kind of weird way to do that, so let's not do that. Let's say, um, and this is where having single digit options is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I can't even do minus T for type. Mm. I guess we'll do this. I guess we will do um, U0 to mean not umbral, meaning penumbral. Okay. Opt ID equals U. Um, God, this is ugly. If A to I opt arg equals zero, then type equals pen umbral. And boy, that's ugly. 
and we might as well put that here. We definitely should put that here as a um, as to make sure we get it right. Type, and then where it says umbral, we will just use um, type. So first of all, I'm probably broken it. So let's confirm that. Somewhere I have everything in the right directory, but I don't actually know where. How many screens do I have? A lot, I guess. There we go. Um... Really? Would that be like star type? Um, if that's true, obviously this has to be star type as well, but that's kind of, or do I need to use star copy? Let me, let's see if that works. Um, morning, okay, yeah, that's not what I want. I do need star copy here. <sighs> Gotta love C, in the sense that you don't. Okay. Whoa. There we go. Okay. It should actually compile. Oh. Oh, we really did want a semicolon there. Okay. It's kind of pointless, but we'll give it what it wants. Okay. So now... Starting to regret my, um... Um... Okay. So now we're just going to kind of fix the time at... Oh, I don't know. I ain't to hell with it. We'll do this. So first of all, ooh, okay, because I'm in the wrong directory. I actually probably need to make that a hard link. I probably should stop uh, pretending that it's going to be where I need it to be. Let's do that. That probably, yeah, just like I do for bclib um, dot h. Um, so that's still working. Haven't broken anything. And now let's say minus u0. Let's see what happens. Well, it didn't break anything, which is good. Um, okay, so now we'll use... This one's very close to 18, so we'll use that. Uh, and again, we are still at stop. Oh, I actually need to now reset the time to now. But we'll remain stopped. And we will go to latitude, very close to uh, 18 degrees. And then longitude, very close to this, whatever the hell this is. Okay. And we'll do this and see where the sun is. And this is not looking good. Um, since azimuth is minus, yeah, this is not looking good at all. It looks like it's saying the sun is at minus 35 minutes with a, not a parallax, we need an, a diameter of one degree. So that says the sun is just right. So I think maybe something I probably could have looked at, uh, U is umbral. Okay. So that's, that's what's wrong. Um, so, I could do this as an and, of course, but I mean, um, 
supposed to use zero, right? I mean, I did, did do that correctly, right? Yeah, let's take a look at the head of this to make sure it gets set. Um, cool. Is that because I forgot to put a colon after? Yes, because I didn't even put it in there at all. I'm so awesome. Okay. So once more, into the breach, my friends. Compiled. Yes. And oh, I actually didn't need to do that. Okay, so this time it is penumbral. Okay, and so now, let's see where we are. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, we're looking for the plus 17 degrees, which is where we are uh, altitude. The very thing that's very, very close to 18 degrees uh, on the right-hand side. Um, Okay, so this is, should be a little bit further from where we were, but still correct. And I guess I will reset the time to now, although... I guess that is sort of a big deal, because we are looking at very small changes. Um, so I said I was going to use this one for the latitude. And for the longitude, we will use the corresponding value. And if this works, by the way, we should see a fairly sunny sky. Or at least, well, it did get sunnier, so that was good. Okay. So now, the sun has an altitude of 33 degrees, and its diameter is 1 degree. Okay, so this is good. This means the sun has just cleared the horizon on Mercury. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. So this means the sun has cleared the horizon on Mercury. This is the... Uh, the... Um, the second line where you would draw to see where the sun has just risen as opposed to, sorry, where it's just finished rising as opposed to just started rising. Now, if we had a, um, a Google Maps of Mercury, we could actually plot the uh, line of sunrise, sunset, which would be cool. I do not know if we have, uh, actually, I want to look into that. Um, doing high resolution maps of other planets Google style and Google might actually have these um, although I would love for it to be open street map or something more open source than that okay so now we, we have the ability um, so the only real question now is if we use earth will we get refraction out of it and I'm sure we won't but let's let's because I, cause I care um, the Earth is planet 399, in case you didn't know. Uh, it was marked down from $4 even. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to try to find it at my roughly... Oh, wow. That is, like, almost exactly where I live. So let's go ahead and fix the time to now. Let's go back to Earth. Well, let's go back to Albuquerque, actually. We will correct that, because it's not quite Albuquerque. No. I think in order to get that, you have to go back to Earth. I didn't know you could type this in. That's cool. Alrighty. And so that is... Let's take a look here. We will need to... Um, is the, sun, the sun's set here, I think. It's, it's amazing that I don't know that. Uh, and that's how, that's how out of touch I am. Actually, I'm pretty sure it has set. It's pretty late. Um, and it is um, close to the equinox, so so we'll use this value, which is maybe closer to where I live than I want it to be, but anyway. Um, and then we will use this number, which is probably the one on the, the other side of the world. So let's, well, I mean, since we have it, we have to use it now, but that's going to be the one that's east of the, um, of the equator of the Prime Meridian. Okay. And it is not Albuquerque, but let's see what's going on there. And there we have the sun just rising. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is refraction, which 
I don't think is going to show up. So here we have the sun's altitude is 16 minutes of arc above, and its diameter is exactly, almost exactly twice, well, not quite twice that, but close to that. So yeah, once again, we have the sun is just rising here. Uh, we will now, of course, do the same thing with the sun, sorry, the sun's finished rising. We'll do the same thing now, which is actually what I meant to do with the sun just starting to rise. And here, refraction will, oh, that was weird. Okay, here the refraction will be an issue. Okay. And so we'll go to this place. And yes, I realize the sun doesn't take that long to, to rise or set, so we are kind of uh, kind of pushing it here with the um, with the accuracy issue. Okay, that's less close to where I live, but this is nowhere near where I live. Okay, so that's what this does. This does the sun's. Altitude is minus 16 degrees. Parallax angle. Um, parent diameter is 32 degrees. Um, okay. I do not think we are compensating. Well, actually, you know what? I think we can find out if we're compensating for refraction. Um, mm hmm. <laughs> Um, show orbits, da da da. Um, okay. Landscape. Um, yeah, I, there is a way to make Stellarium use muse refraction. Let me find it real quick if possible. I think there is. I could be very wrong. Um, okay. This was back in 2011. Hmm. A dead cat or a dog. Uh, let's see. Oh, geometric and apparent. Okay, so so if I turn off the atmosphere, oh, hang on, I have the atmosphere off. Okay. Um, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're still almost back. Um, uh. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. So it does appear that once we turn on the atmosphere, um, let's see, the uh, azimuth altitude apparent is, uh, oh, actually, is that right? Apparent is 14 with a diameter of 32. And the geometric, so wait, hang on. Okay, so I did do a U, uh, I did a, did not use U there, so, um, yeah. So this is, this does not account for refraction, and I didn't really expect it to. That was, that would have been a really awesome thing. Um, I need to mention this. Um, does not include refraction. I don't actually know if there is a way to include refraction using this particular function, ed term c. Um, so let's let's see if we can. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, ellipsoid terminator. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's no way to actually put, you know, instead of saying zero degrees, say a different, um, different degree, like minus 34 minutes of arc for refraction. Uh, body fixed frame associated with the target, aberration correction, number of points, epoch associated with target center, terminator points. Oh, those are the outputs, never mind. Um, yeah, I think, um, the light source, the target, uh, the time, the fixed reference frame, which I think has to be, um, um, which has to be, uh, ephemeris time. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's a way to do this. Um, Okay, but let's go ahead and do one more thing here before we go, because I am getting a little bit. Let's use um, Jupiter Saturn. Let's see how it looks on Saturn. And, and here I'm less interested in the exact value. I'm more interested in seeing if we're even close. Um, Saturn. Oh, actually, I could just have typed it in, couldn't I? Saturn. Okay. And then let's find a place where we think the Terminator should be, and if it's close, we're in good shape. We still have to worry a little bit. Let me go ahead and make a note of this. We still have to worry about a little bit about where, which side of the Terminator we're giving. Um, um, which side is sunlight and dark? Because this just tells us the dividing line, and we, we could kind of use more information than that. Okay, um, so did I do that? I did do that. Okay. Um, and let's try to get to a, like a decent Albuquerque in latitude of about 35. There we are. Um, this is not that close to work. Well, I mean, I don't live on Saturn, but if I did, this still wouldn't be that close to it. Um, so let's use this. Ba, 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 ba. Ah! Don't do that. Mommy. Um. And. Okay. So now. This is not looking good. Because it does appear that at this location where the sun should be freaking rising, 
or, or setting, either one. Did I use minus U there? I No, I didn't. So this should actually be um, 64, 56, point 50, point 0.5, 35, okay. So here, we should have Saturn. The only thing I can think of is we're not using the correct 3D model for, let me see if we can, um, I think we can use more 3D, we can use 3D models. I guess we're going to do that, we might as well do that too, right? Okay. So, okay, not cool. This says that Saturn's seeing the sun at about two degrees under the horizon at this time. Let me go ahead and update the time real quick. Maybe that'll help. Whoa. Mm, minus one degree with a uh, apparent diameter of, yeah, that's not, that's not cool. I mean, it's pretty damn close, but it's not as close as I'd like it to be. So let's try a different location. Let's try this guy, the, for the first 40 value. Um, and it's possible I'm doing something else very wrong. I mean, uh, but if this is close, we can kind of say that, okay, uh, this program is working reasonably well. We can defend why it's working reasonably well. We, we, have, a, we have a source. And let's see what the sun's doing here. So it's um, minus one degrees, and th there's no way its uh, diameter is going to be big enough to put it over the edge of the. Yeah. So I'm not sure why this is happening. I guess we're going to go ahead and try this now with a. Um, let's try the penumbral version. Woohoo! So we reset to now. And again, I know we're off by a few seconds here and there. Um, and in this case, I guess we'll use the biggest 35 value since it is coming first. And zero meters is fine, so, so we'll say this is our latitude. And this is an opportunity to complain, by the way, to the spice people that uh, well, assuming that Horizons shows the same information that Stellarium is doing, which it might not. If it doesn't, that's an opportunity to complain to the Stellarium people. You always got to complain to somebody. Okay, so this says the sun is, whoa, minus three degrees below the horizon. Um, that's not good. Mm, that's actually even with allowing for the, well, let's see. How many minutes off are we? Which is not the correct way to measure things, but you know. Oh, this, okay, this is the sun setting here. Okay, so let's go the other way. Okay, whoa, 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 too fast. Um, okay, so this was, this is quite a few minutes ago. And since we're talking about a penumbra, So this is still not great. I'm not really happy with this. Um, I don't know if there's a parameter here to um, to compute more accurately, but um, this is not super groovy. So I'm going to go ahead and save this version unless I already have. Uh, oh, I didn't. Okay. Okay. I think though I'm happy. I'm I'm happy that this is kind of sort of accurate. In the sense that, I mean, it's not grossly inaccurate. Um, still not crazy about it, though. So the next step here would be the the big the big sort of step that um, that I was hoped that I was sort of going for uh, was to create an API so people could use this. Um, on the web because I don't think there is such a uh, there is such a um, API for this sort of thing on the web. Um, so that and I thought I already had some sort of API structure built. 
I apparently do not. Um, we'll check. Let me check something else here real quick. Um, I might have it somewhere else, but I, I really don't think I do actually. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a few things called APIs, but they're actually me connecting the APIs, not me providing an API. Um, and I then I do think though there is one on my. Um, in another, I do have another, um, which I don't use and don't talk about that much, but this one here, the Yamak one, I also have some, um, I also have some, I might have a server running here, or I might just have something called readme.server running here. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I actually have anything in here. I don't think I do actually. I mean, and yeah, I'm running that little web server thing. I don't. I might have a something in here that kind of does. Um, yeah, the game engine web sockets. This sort of stuff kind of uh, acts like a um, an API. Let me quickly look at it here. Yeah, so this tries to process a message given by the user, but I don't think it is actually, um, I don't think it's actually, I don't think I can modify this to do what I want. I think we're going to have to start from scratch, or at least, you know, cut and paste some code from this, but generally not be able to use this as is. Um, so that, that should be fun. We should be able to uh, have a little preliminary API. Um, you know, maybe have Jason use it, which, because at some point I do want to create an API that will access a lot of crap um, from my DigitalOcean uh, machine, which is where this is, this all is. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching the stream. I appreciate it. And I will talk with the rest of you later, unless the coronavirus gets me, which is very probable. Possible, very possible, not probable. Bye for now.